the first thing is that we must make a decision to be the best that we're going to be or be the best company or be the best time manager. Whatever decision we, we need, we need to make it and commit to it. Burn the boats, as they say. Then we need to put disciplines in our life to make sure that those decisions are carried out. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interview. Hi, it's Rick Nusky here and welcome to the My Future Business Show. I'm your host and I'm online with Terry Ogburn. Now, Terry is a specialist who uh, deals a lot with strategic planning and business development. And today's call, we're going to be looking at working on your business and instead of inside of it. Welcome to the show, Terry. How are you today? I'm great, Rick, and thank you so much for having me on your show, and how are you doing? I'm fantastically well, and look, uh, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you first before we deep dive into this particular topic. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, great. Um, I started um, in 1979 by opening an air conditioning company. I had been fired out of the car business, and um, so I decided to open a company. And there I was, I was the technician, just like what we started our conversation with. And that's where most people start. Um, they have an idea, they jump in, they can do some technical work. So they become the carpenter, they become the general contractor, all that stuff. I was fortunate enough to uh, have s some mentors and joining some meetings and networking. And I encourage all your listeners to go out and find mentors and people that can, that have already blazed that trail for them and, and kind of get, you know, help them along the way as well. It helped me tremendously. Uh, while still running my business in 1985, I decided to go out and help small businesses like myself who had drifted into this working in your business concept. And by 1989, I had drifted into the corporate world and I was doing uh, work with uh, Radio Shack, Century 21. I did, um, I took a company from a kitchen table, five of us. We took it public in, in two and a half years with 11 regional offices and over 2,000 franchisees. And in 2005, I started my own uh, coaching consulting business. And I've been doing that now for a little over 12 years. So you've uh, obviously improved a lot of small, medium, large organizations. So there's some authority there, some experience there for anybody who's listening today on the My Future Business Show. Um, be sure to reach out to Terry, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I'd love to talk a little about the idea around the importance of creating operations manual and what actually is an operations manual? How does it help a business? Uh, well, it's a great way to um, put together the infrastructure so it allows you to uh, start the process of working on your business. An operations manual, once that is put together, uh, you can duplicate your business. So for those listeners out there that, are, that want to open multiple locations or want to think about licensing agreements or franchising, things like that, you will need a, uh, an operations manual. And to me, an operations manual consists, it's the working book of your business. So it's got your business development plan. It's got your strategic plan in it. It's got your job descriptions and organizational strategies. It has your checklists, your budget performer, which is not used much in today's society, um, but also policies and procedures in both a direct uh, marketing plan and a social media plan. If you put that all together, See, when we're getting into business, we should get into business with the idea of, of selling it. We should never get into business with the idea of running it. Now, you may want to run it for 25 years or whatever. That doesn't matter. But it's easier to sell a business if you don't have to be a part of it. So when you're thinking of it from that aspect, you put things in place. Um, like for an example, my air conditioning company it wasn't named Terry's Air Conditioning Company. It was named Buccaneer refrigeration and air conditioning because living in the Tampa Bay area, the bucks were predominant there. So I figured, well, attach my name to the Buccaneers. I'm going to get six months worth of advertising. Uh, it turns out I got a year's worth of advertising every year. They talk, they, all they did is talk about the bucks. So one of my things is if you don't have a good game, borrow one. 
But that's really smart marketing, isn't it? You know, you're just leveraging the uh, position of somebody who's uh, near and dear to your local society or community. Exactly. And, and I, I even would get phone calls, you know, I don't know if you follow the Bucks much, but in their early years, they were, they were not that great. They lost like 26 of their first 26 games. So, um, so people would call us up and go, I hope you're not like them Bucks, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it didn't, I learned there, it wasn't it, negative advertising is just as good as positive, as long as it's not you being the negative one. But, um, and I can also, I'd like to run through four things here that would also help your listeners, um, become more, uh, disciplined about their, their lifestyles. That'd be great. And the first thing is that we must um, make a decision to be the best that we're going to be or be the best company or, or be the best time manager. Whatever decision we, we need, we need to make it and commit to it. Burn the boats, as they say. I'm sure your listeners have heard of, of that. Once we have that decision made, we've committed to making that happen, then we need to put um, disciplines in our life to make sure that those decisions are carried out. Then once we have the, the disciplines in place, we need to be decisive about the actions that we take. So I give your listeners permission to procrastinate on anything that doesn't take them towards their goals. And, and then finally, visualize. We are, we, we are people who think in pictures. So the more pictures we have, vision boards, visualizations of, of who we want to be and emulate other people, um, uh, there's a lot of people out there that we can take and align our business with a business that's already doing what we want to do. Give you a quick example. Disney World, most people have heard of Walt Disney and Disney World, but Disney World does not think of another theme park as their competition. They think a company called Nordstrom's is their competition. Now, Nordstrom's is a retail store. It sells you know, clothes and things like that. But it has the best guest experience of all corporations. Yeah. So that's why they pattern, that's their, that they want their guests to have the best experience. Yeah, you can see how that relates. And, you know, from somebody who's uh, not experienced in that sort of exposure, would, they would never make that connection, would they? No. Um, and not everybody's going to be familiar with uh, Main Street, but in every Main Street of a, of a Disney uh, theme park, mm -hmm. they have these hitches, these horse hitches thing, you know, they, where you tie up the horses. Um, and every one of those, those hitching posts are stripped and painted every night uh, after the guests leave and repainted for, for the next morning. Every night. Every night. That's amazing. Because they want, well, think, think of it this way. 30,000 people go through Disney every day. Mm -hmm. What would those posts look like after a week? They'd get worn out, wouldn't they? So the customer, when they come in, or the guests, when they come in, they see fresh new stuff. They have a lot of, there's a great book called Inside the Magic Kingdom for your listeners to get. It'll, it'll help you tremendously understand the, the principle about um, emulating others. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about, um, you know, how strategic planning plays a part in your operations manual and is that inside of the operations manual or is that a, a bigger thing than just an operations manual the way i construct it is your job descriptions you you lay out you know your accounts payable your receivables all of those are tasks you know so you got to collect the money you got ledgers you got things to do mm -hmm. okay those uh become task within the organization Okay. That is your strategic plan. If you had a hundred things, pay bills, all that, if you had a hundred line items, your job is to get those hundred line items done every quarter. That's your strategic plan. Now your goals are different because your goals need to be an objective. What was it you'd like to get accomplished backed by a, a strong why or a purpose? Why is that important? And once you do those two things, what is the outcome? See, if we take an objective, objective, back it by a, a definite purpose, a strong why, it will create a result each and every time. If we paint the result in the beginning, then we then we'll figure out our strategic plan to get us to the to the result. And this and this idea of a strategic plan, if we go 
um, back when we first start our businesses, oftentimes we're working uh, inside of it, we're doing everything. Um, does this help us to step back and look at the 50,000 foot view of their business? Exactly, because you have to you have to go out onto the line, you figure out what you want your accounts payable person to do, your salesperson to do, your customer service person to do. And you know, you Rick, you've been in corporate mm -hmm. with me. You know that one receptionist uh, responsibility in one company and another company, totally di two different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Customer service could be different in, in companies. Mm -hmm. So we need to outline what we want them to do. Once we explain to someone what we want them to do, then the next hardest part is hold them accountable. So and when I write a, when I write, I call them position contracts rather than job descriptions, but I actually have a contract with the people that I work with and it's a clear outline of what they're supposed to be doing, what they're, how they're going to get graded or be evaluated on that, their task and what their compensation schedule is for completing that task, those tasks. And because we score it, we can actually put in a numbering system that says, okay, if you score a 3.75, that's a 75%, you get your pay. If you do a four, you get a uh, reward, bonus, and so forth and so on. You can gauge it any way you want. Yep. And now we encourage them. The other thing that, that we want to learn uh, about working on our business is learn to manage by objectives. Yep. Now, managing objectives um, is simply – uh, deciding on the objective that you want their teammate to um, be on, ask them how long it's going to take them, and then um, um, check in on them periodically to see how well they're doing and remind them that they can call on you anytime they need help. Mm -hmm. Now, the goal is if they call on you, is not for you to help them, it's for you to encourage them to come up with two solutions and come back to you. And then what happens is pretty soon is they just come to you and tell you what they've done rather than asking you what to do. I also wonder if I can hark back a little bit to the operations manual that we're talking about and the idea of linking it to performance and review and all these um, these things that we do inside of our businesses, that the idea of value and where that fits into all of this. For example, if, if you add more value, you will get rewarded uh, with a potential pay rise or the ability to move through the ranks or a different department or into a different role completely. How do, is that something that fits inside of an operations manual as well? Exactly. Um, coupling with the operations manual, you're going to want to have training manuals mm -hmm. uh, for your positions. One of the things that we did um, at Radio Shack was we created a career path for our for our team the another problem that small businesses have especially when they're getting started is they want to bring in the experts you know they want to oh let me hire an office manager so they bring in the office manager and the office manager says well i've been doing it this way for 25 years i don't see why we have to change yeah well, now you bring in three or four people, and they've all got this, all this experience, and now you can imagine the chaos that's going on in your business. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when you when you bring in you like the uh, construction company I'm I'm working with, we're creating a career path for their team. So all we have to do is hire laborers, find the potential winners out of the labor pool, evaluate, move them up into apprentice, and then they can start moving their you know, through the career path. Mm -hmm. So you're training your people from the ground zero in your culture. So you don't have to bring in these outsiders that you have to try to reconform to your way of thinking. For those who are listening to the call and you're looking for help, you are a uh, beginner entrepreneur or an existing small business owner and you need some help and you're in the area. Um, Terry, where can they find you if they need your help? Well, they can find me uh, on LinkedIn, Terry Ogburn. Uh, uh, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. They can find me um, my Facebook page. I have a public figure page. I have Ogburn's Business Solutions mm -hmm. and uh, then my own page. Um, I'm also uh, two websites, ogburnsbusinesssolutions.com yep. and terryogburn.com and you can go there. Uh, if you click on, uh, go to my website, click on my testimonies, look at some of the, the people that I've been able to help. And remember, no, another thing about working on your business, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. So we need to also factor in um, uh, enough money to, to pay our bills and pay our taxes as well.
Um, you can, um, I have a free coaching hour offered to your guests. So if they um, are having a challenge and they need my help, just go to my website, click on the contact us button. Um, it'll drop down. Just put in your name and email address and uh, contact information. Um, challenge you're having. Uh, we'll set up an, a time. Uh, I'll devote an hour. No sales pitch. It's not about me upselling or anything. It's about me just sitting with your one of your listeners and helping them overcome these hurdles and get them out to work on their business. Thank you so much for that, Terry. And anybody who is listening, definitely follow up with Terry. Uh, send your information through. So, Terry, once again, thank you very much for being on the My Future Business Show today. Well, thank you so much again for having me. I appreciate it very much. It's been fun having you on the call with us today. Now click on that big red subscribe button and make sure you leave us a comment, share us with your friends, and join the growing list of leading entrepreneurs who have enjoyed their time on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews.